Welcome to hashtag sports, where it's literally just a bag of <laughs> beating itself over and over again. Like, uh, that part doesn't get cut somehow. I don't know what happened. Right? When he wears a hat that's not fitted, it looks like he's subliminally advertising Doritos. I know I'm on the Peyton Manning uh, plan for remembering every football play I've ever ran in my life. Do you have a problem finding snapbacks that fit your giant head? I got my buddy pissed off the other day because he's bald. I said, when you wash your face, how high up do you go? <laughs> All right, now that that's out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming back to Hashtag Sports. We don't know what you're doing here, but make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Good on you, man. We can't go another second. Joe got away scot free this area right here is shaved <laughs> for public consumption so when he goes to the store people don't ask why he's wearing a sweater under his polo man he what happened to our show oh, mario's got my back <laughs> come on mario it's a dicky it's a shade falco jersey <laughs> for the love of god you gotta dress this thing up somehow <laughs>what no roasting at the start of this show like last week guys nothing like that not yet we're all we're all on a high coming off that schedule prediction that schedule prediction yes <laughs> and as as always every year i always have them with the worst schedule i don't know i have worst record i don't know why i do that all the time to myself pessimistic old man i am an old man yes man get off my club. porch and hit that like and subscribe button y'all we well, you're, you're watching hashtag sports from right to left on your on your screen, yeah, we have Ryan Lacel from Rock Sports Network. We have Paul and Joe from Hashtag and yours truly, the MC and host of this shit show. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as always, you can find all of our stuff, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. All of our shows go to iTunes and Spotify. Uh, tonight, or today's show is sponsored by Mr. Rogers Homes in association with Cryer.co. You know, we got guys, we spent a lot of time looking at the Buffalo Bills roster up and down, examining what they're going to do in 2023. We just talked about their schedule. However, it's time to peek over the fence a little bit and try to see what's going on with the other teams in the division. Ryan, in our schedule prediction, saying that the AFC East, when it's all said and done, may be the toughest division in football. You know what? And he, I don't think he's wrong. You look at some of the players that came into the division. This is going to be a three-part series. Obviously, we're going to be talking about Miami today. We're going to talk about the Jets next week, and then eventually that team that plays in the Northeast. I don't even know who they are. Anyway, that all being said, let's talk about the Miami Dolphins. Did they get better? Did they did they improve their team enough to usurp the Bills in the AFC East as the kings of the East? Um, I hear it all the time from a bunch of different fan bases. They're like, oh, yeah, congratulations, you know, hanging up that AFC East banner. Yeah, shut up, guys. You know, win one, then you can uh, then you could talk, you know. Ooh. Anyway, Ooh. I didn't win any. They have they they their banner after they beat Buffalo in week three week, last year. Week three. That's that's a gift that keeps on giving. When they had that stretch, when they were eight and three, then they were eight and eight. <laughs> it was beautiful. Uh, so let's just go along, uh, along the lines. Uh, let's start with Ryan then we'll go to Joe and then, uh, Paul will hit cleanup. Ryan, looking at the roster, obviously the Miami Dolphins did not have a first round pick due to you know, them forfeiting it. Did they get better in the off season with some of their free agent acquisitions or trades? And how do they stack up now against the Buffalo Bills in the AFC? I mean, they're still chasing Buffalo. I think the argument can be made that they're probably chasing the Jets at this point as well. Um, I don't think that they've gotten marketably better. They the, Their best acquisition, obviously, was Jalen Ramsey. And I think you question how big of an acquisition was he at this point in his career. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think there's a lot of... Uh, the there's a lot of guys on paper that if you were playing Madden 2020, <laughs> you would have a really good roster. I think if you were the <laughs> Miami Dolphins <laughs> running back, they didn't do anything there. I mean, they just brought back the same guys that they had last year that they struggled to run the ball with, um, you know, and, and their entire season this year, just like last year hinges on to a tongue of Iowa. this time. However, last year it was on his shoulder this year. It's on his head. So, mm -hmm. They didn't do much to shore up the offensive line. So all that all that said, I mean, they went out and got Jalen Ramsey. Um, they I think they got a little bit better defensively with some of the moves that they made. Um, but the one position that they needed to shore up was the offensive line, and they didn't do anything there. And I, I don't think that there's any reason to think that this Miami team is any more dangerous than they were last year. Tyree Kill is a year older. He's still a phenom, but he's still he's a year older. Father time always wins. Um, that's an old adage, unless you're Tom Brady, because I don't know 
that guy for whatever reason, but <laughs> uh, you know, other, other than that, I mean, you know, they're, they're a Tyreek Hill tweaked hammy away from being a sub 500 team by the time this is all said and done. Yeah, I'm going to take a little bit of a different take. Uh, I, I agree that they haven't shored up the offensive line the way they would like to, um, but they have signed some offensive linemen. Most of them uh, served as backup players uh, in previous regimes, um, so you don't know how good they're going to be coming to Miami. Um, but I mean, they, they're trying, it's kind of like looking at before the draft, it's kind of like looking at what Buffalo built, the Buffalo bills were doing at the offensive line. Like they were, they added some pieces, but it's like, how good are they going to do? So I think the offensive line is definitely still a question mark for Miami, but I do think it has, uh, the chance to be better, to be improved from last season. Um, you look at the running back position, you know, they did, they did keep, uh, Gaskins, uh, and I think they signed another running back, but I forget who. Um, so they have some pieces there. I think that the, Buff- the Miami Dolphins normally just run well against Buffalo. I don't know why it's not even like they have the names to do. So it just seems to happen sometimes. Um, and yeah, they did sure up something. Uh, Mostert was the other running back that I was thinking of. Um, but anyway, they, they did, they did improve the defense again, adding depth more than anything. Obviously, again, you talk about Jalen Ramsey. Uh, I actually did a funny TikTok about how much Dan Ramsey got burnt last year when the Bills played them week one and Stefan mm-hmm. Diggs just went off on them uh, and saying, good, I'm glad he, we play him twice a year. Um, Robbie Anderson, to me, doesn't move the needle at wide receiver, especially considering the wide receivers they have. Uh, at least Hunter put some respect on his name. It's Robbie Chosen. Come on. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Thank <laughs> you so much for that, Ryan. Uh, Robbie Thank you. It's, it's, it was a necessary correction. Yeah, yeah. yeah Robbie Chosen. <laughs> oh. I, I I chose not to say that. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I I think that the, the Dolphins are definitely still chasing the Buffalo Bills. I think the fact that they didn't have a first round draft pick this year really hurt them. Uh, I thought that the yeah, they could use some things to improve. And as I said on previous episodes, and I'll say this until I'm proven wrong, Tua Tagovailoa is just not the answer at quarterback um, for any team. I think that he gets bailed out by his wide receivers. Uh, but sometimes mediocre quarterbacks get away with that, and that's what has happened so far. I think last year during the roughest part of the schedule, he unfortunately uh, was out due to his head injuries. And listen, it, whether you like Tua or don't like Tua, it doesn't matter. Obviously, his health is the biggest concern, um, and I hope that he stays healthy all season. I really do. Uh, but his track record doesn't promote that at all. You know, and I think, I, first off, the big headline is that Jalen Ramsey is now a Miami Dolphin, and that I don't care about at all, <laughs> right? That's not the that's not the one that moves the needle for me. Bradley Chubb coming into the division, I think that's a little bit of a different story, right? I, that that one bothers me a little bit because we've got a very important investment under center here in Buffalo. So hearing you know uh, Bradley Chubb coming into Buffalo twice a year, or coming you know playing Buffalo twice a year, I'm not in love with that idea, right? Uh, with that being said, Tom Brady was doing God's work and got that Miami Dolphins first round pick that they probably wouldn't have used well anyway off the board. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tom. You finally did something for us. And uh, with all that being said, right, you look at the 2023 Miami Dolphins and people are heralding them as one of the most improved teams in the offseason. And they had the fewest amount of draft picks of any team in the league. And to be honest with you. I don't think they did all that well in free agency, right? Mm-hmm. G- getting Jalen and getting Chubb. Okay. That's, that's cool. Right. That's, that's cool. Uh, but uh, I think one of the reasons that people in Buffalo will say, well, Raheem Mostert, I mean, Raheem Mostert's pretty good. Literally any team could run on Buffalo, right? Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's baked into the cake. Um, any running back is going to look good against Buffalo. And Raheem, Raheem Mostert at times last year against Buffalo looked really, really dangerous. And then Miami just stopped feeding him the football, to which I don't understand. But maybe, Mario, you could shed some light on that. Do you remember watching Raheem Mostert absolutely mollywop? There it is. Mollywop the Bills on uh, several carries. Yes. And then Mike McDaniels just simply forgot he was on the roster. He forgot. The over 30 Raheem Mostert, by the way. Yeah. Even, even though he's still a burner. When you have to mention Mike White as one of your offseason signings, you, you didn't have a lot of offseason signings that were that 
that big of a needle. Give, uh, give it to his track record as an NFL quarterback. The backup quarterback has been a pretty prevalent piece mm-hmm. in that equation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, Raheem Mostert's fine, right? I mean, but yeah. there's a reason. I mean, if you, if your number one running back is Raheem Mostert, there's a reason that he's a 31 year old who's on his eighth team in nine seasons, right? I mean, he's just he's just not a guy who knows how to stay healthy, and for whatever reason. He's not a guy that teams know how to use with any type of consistency. Uh, he's, he's, you know, he's a home run hitter, but he's also injury prone. You know, he's got a laundry list of hamstring problems and groin problems that just go back and forth. And, you know, it's the kind of the same, you know, the same argument that I use when the bills re-signed Isaiah McKenzie, right? Like there's a reason that these guys get to a certain age and they still haven't been quote unquote discovered. Right. And he's, mm-hmm. he's on his eighth team in nine seasons. And if that's your running back one, you have bigger problems than that, you know, maybe what's on paper. And then when your offensive line help comes in the form of two reclamation projects that you sign today in Isaiah Wynn and Cedric um, Ogbaji, that's a, I mean, you know, that's, that doesn't spell, uh, shouldn't spell any type of confidence if you're a Miami Dolphins fan, especially with what you have at quarterback who is, taking judo to learn how to fall because he can't stop getting hurt when he falls to the ground. Like <laughs> that's an amazing, that is yeah. true. amazing. That, that, is that true. was one of the statements is that the team enrolled him in judo classes so he could learn how to fall when he gets tackled mm-hmm. in the NFL. Here's what happens for me. Obviously we've seen up close and personal, the blueprint that the Buffalo bills have had, you know, they, you know, certain things, that happened with the Buffalo Bills organization. We understand, even if we don't like it, you had Mario Addison and Jerry Hughes who were getting up there in age. So what did you do? You drafted their replacements. You cycled positions at certain places because you knew you had to, you had to either get younger at the position or you you had somewhat of a need at that position. Mm -hmm. You look at the Miami Dolphins from top to bottom, impressive roster. I mean, Ryan even said, you know, if it was 2020, it'd be pretty amazing. If you look at them from top to bottom, what is the one weakness that you would say? Maybe running back position. Mm, you, you got a lot of speed there. You got Jeff Wilson as your handcuff to mm-hmm. help you out with there. But then you look at it, you say, this offensive line is something that needs to be addressed. They don't have a first-round pick. Okay, what do you think is the logical thing then for the organization to do in the second round? Get an offensive lineman, cycle positions. Austin Jackson is not your answer at right tackle. By the way, two is left-handed, and I don't think he is left-handed. Someone needs to tell him he's right-handed. But the point is this. Austin Jackson was part of three first-round picks that the Miami Dolphins had. You had Tua, Austin Jackson. You guys remember the third? Byron you say his Jones? name, I would be very impressed by it. No, Noah Igby Agony. Remember him? No. See, no. exactly. Nobody knows no. him. A first-round pick was burned on him. You traded for or you you traded for Jalen Ramsey. Mm-hmm. And then what do you do with your first pick in the 2023 draft? Yeah. You go with a corner. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Does, I mean, does that you, you, spell you, a lack of I mean, you already moved Byron Jones or, or, or Brandon Jones to safety. Mm-hmm. You got Xavier Howard at corner. He's getting up there in age. But uh, Ryan, I'll let you go in a second. But you're sitting there, you just made this trade. Now you got another corner in there. And by the way, Paul, they're holding on to two fullbacks. Just letting you know on this roster. Of course they are. (laughs) Of course they are. But but Ryan, honestly, to me, that doesn't – going out there and getting a seventh-round pick and two free agents to shore up your line is not what I would say trying to help out Tua Tagovailoa. Neither is the fact that you're trying to run it back with, you know, a running back duo of Raheem (laughs) Mostert and Jeff Wilson. Like (laughs) – you're not doing your quarterback any favors and mm-hmm. what, what they, tr- what they're trying to do is what any team with a young quarterback does is maximize that rookie wage window that you have with your NF- with your, with your quarterback and go out and put a shit ton of talent around them. The problem is, mm-hmm. is that you're in year four of your rookie quarterback and you have no idea whether he's any good, mm-hmm. whether he can stay healthy um, I mean, at least you look at like Mac Jones and it's like, well, we don't know if he's any good, but at least we know he's going to play 17 games, right? Like mm-hmm. yeah. you don't even know if Tua can be counted on to play every game or finish the game if he does play. And that, and then you go out and you don't get him any help in terms of staying healthy, staying upright, running the ball a little bit more. 
safety valves. I mean, they lose Mike Gusecki and they replace mm-hmm. him with who? Like Tyler Croft? Like, what Durham is that? Smith do? is like, currently is... at number one on the depth chart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or but I mean, Smythe, like, whatever. I mean, you know, your safety valve is, you know, guy that I've never heard of before at the tight end position. <laughs> and I play fantasy football, so I know a lot of guys that most people don't know, right? Like, it, that that's a significant problem, I think. And Miami is extremely top heavy. I don't think they have the depth on the offensive side of the football um, defensively. Sure. Great. But at the end of the day, if you can't score points, I don't care what your right. defense it doesn't is. matter. Like, Buffalo has shown that year in and year out. It doesn't matter yeah. how good your defense is. If you can't score points when it counts, you have serious problems. 100% agree, Ryan. You know, you can't win games 19 to 16 in the NFL for no. 17 weeks. You just can't no. do it. Right. But with that being said, you know, people are going to talk about, well, if Tua stays healthy, you didn't really make any investments in the offensive line. It is, are you kind of just saying, well, listen, this is going to be what it's going to be. And if the laws of attrition take Tua, then the laws of attrition take Tua. And that is just, that that is just it was if it doesn't happen this year it would happen eventually right because you probably didn't send Teron Armstead to Tokyo to learn the John Cena lightning fist or become a Yokozuna right like you didn't do anything for your offensive line here so I I completely agree the weapons just aren't good enough to keep to is safe enough but even safe I don't think he's a level of quarterback that takes you all the way so at some point. If Tua calls it a career after 2023, doesn't that kind of do you some favors? Like, aren't you just kind of happy you can hit the reset button at that point? Like, as an organization, doesn't that just make your life easier? Maybe, but now you've got contracts that are up, all right? Like, now you've missed your window. Waddle's going to require a giant contract. Tyreek Hill already said he's retiring in 2025. Yeah, I I mean, you know, so the clock, you're, you're almost, they're in a very similar situation to Buffalo with the exception of they don't know if they have a quarterback. Right. Like mm-hmm. Buffalo is is hitting that point where their clock has expired and they have to start making tough decisions. That's next year for, for Miami. Yeah. So if they don't have a quarterback, you really need to think about just blowing everything up it, 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 by that point. Right. I mean, you've got you, you've got you have some trade candidates. You're going to have some guys that you could potentially move like that's a that's a problem. And it all hinges on the fact that you put your eggs in the Tom Brady basket. And when that didn't work <laughs> out and you were stuck with Tua, now you're in a situation where you don't have a first-round pick to go replace or even draft somebody to potentially take over for him next year. Now you're staring at 2024 with Mike White and a rookie, and that's well, not a situation you want to be in. Yeah, so, Joe, looking yep. back in, in Bill's history, right, mm-hmm. the last time I remember an organization trying to replace a player as often as Miami has tried to replace Tua, it was the Bills trying to replace Fred Jackson. Right. Sure. It just didn't seem to matter. Fred Jackson on unfor- Fred Jackson won every job mm-hmm. Tua isn't winning the job. Right. right. It's just right. Miami just can't seem to figure out what another option is because right. every every idea they have is a bad one. Right. right. So as an organization, you look at this, you look at Miami schedule. They've got a top five strength of schedule. Right. Yeah. They've got a tough schedule coming into the yep. season. Like what, what's your plan here? Right. And looking at their schedule, it's, it's very tough early on, you know, you're Mm -hmm. at LA week one at new England week two versus Denver, who we all, I think we all said at one point, Denver's going to be better, right? I don't know how good they're going to be, but Russell Wilson, Ryan said it in the, uh, in the schedule video, Russell Wilson can't be worse than he was last year. At Buffalo, Giants, KC's down. Like, it starts off rough. And if you start losing those games, how fast are you going to pull, pull out Tua and say, what do we have in the shelf? Where do we go? Is Skylar Thompson the answer? Probably not. But still, where do we go from here? And this is a team that, uh, <clears throat> from my recollection, doesn't have the, the draft capital in the next round to move up to get a top five pick to get one of those stud quarterbacks who are going to come out next season. Um, so yeah, I, I agree with, you know, I agree with Ryan. Like they, they are in a position where they're going to start making some tough decisions and they just don't have the, the knowledge to go in. And look at this, you know, you talk about Buffalo having to make those decisions starting this past year. Well, this was with the regime who had been there the whole time. Josh Allen has been there, right? Changing coaching staff, new new co- head coach just last season, new GM. 
they they are coming into this at a pretty bad time. At a pretty bad time. It's it's like here's here's what we have. Best of luck to you. And uh, I don't know if they'll know what to do uh, with this situation. Uh, but again, I wouldn't be surprised come week nine, ten. What's we, what's the buy? I think their buy is week ten. You see something dramatically different. Uh, the second half of the season. Now, the second half of the season for them gets a little lighter, but you still have Buffalo again, Dallas, um, Baltimore. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, their their schedule plays out that it screams someone's getting fired on the bye week. Right? Yeah. They go to right. Kansas City the week before their bye. That mm-hmm. screams someone's losing their job heading into that. I don't know if it's going to be the quarterback. I don't know if it's going to be a coordinator. They were talking about Mike McDaniels being fired at the end of last season after starting well eight and zero and finishing you know eight he, eight and eight whatever they were. He had the cliff. Kingsbury I don't think there was a lot route. to that. I think it was mm-hmm. mostly social media driven. But where yeah. there's rumblings, there I mean, people are watching social media, right? Yeah. You know, is is Mike McDaniels on the hot seat by the time this season's over if things don't play out? He he bet on Tua. He came in and took mm-hmm. this job and said, "I'm good with Tua." at the quarterback position. Cause remember they had already lost out on Brady because that was the whole Brian Flores situation that, that blew that all up. Well, so, and they, they also went after Lamar, or at least rumors had it. They were going after Lamar too, right? Like they, they were in the Lamar Jackson mm-hmm. sweepstakes and they were in the Deshaun Watson sweepstakes before all that happened too. So yeah. But how, how hard were they in on Lamar? If, if they didn't even talk to right. him when, right. he, when they, he had the, the, uh, the, the open opportunity to go get traded for, I mean, hell they, that, right. they had, they had first round picks. They could have, traded in the well future well that's the thing right so if you look at their draft class for 2024 they have a first a second and then their next pick isn't until the fifth right mm, so wow. like it's it's a pretty thin cabinet for miami so i don't blame them for cr- trying to stay away from you know dipping their toes in the lamar jackson pool just to see how warm the waters are but when mm. you realize that you're going to be given a multiple first round picks to go get the guy and that means your first pick you're going to get a second round pick and then a fifth round pick you're doing mm. what you did this year all over again only kind of worse right mm. yes you yeah, end up with I'm, lamar but i'm, but I'm doing right? with lamar instead of tua Right. right. I mean, yeah. you know, my, my yeah. running game problem is solved. My offensive line problem is ver- is by by and large solved. And if I can run an offense with with Lamar Jackson, Jalen Waddle, Raheem Mostert and Tyree Kill, like good <laughs> luck to anybody in the NFL with a Mike McDaniels <laughs> offense and that type of that type of speed. Yeah. You know, again, I, I understand where you're coming from, from a long term draft mm-hmm. compensation situation. but. I've been vocal before. I know we've talked about it, Paul. Like none of it matters if you go in a Super Bowl. I don't care what the next 10, 15 years of my franchise looks like. Right. If they win a Super Bowl, you can blow the whole stadium up for all I care and, and have no team for the next five seasons. And you know, yeah, it, it and all think, will be well. I think that brings up a good point. So Mario, when you're looking at, you know, the fact that they weren't they were in on Lamar, but not, right? If Tua is really you're you're tossing Tua to Tua to the scrap heap in 2024. And you've got a first round pick and a second round pick, but then that's it, right? You're likely not trading up and you're likely not getting a top five, top six pick anyway. So you're likely having to trade two first round picks to move up anyway. Was it worth it? I think it's worth it because what I think Mike McDaniel is probably doing, he's saying, listen, I didn't draft Tua. Tua was not my guy. Look what I was able to do with Tua. And look what I was able to do in the limited capacity and the limited skill set that he has. So maybe free agents seeing all the nice toys that are around him, maybe like, hey, that's why. I mean, you take you take a shot at Lamar, you take a shot at Brady, you take a shot at Watson, you take a shot at all these guys. Tua ends up being the best friend that lived next door to you your entire life that you take to the prom because no, everyone that you else you asked said no. You know, I mean, everything else, yeah. you know, you know, mm-hmm. intertwined. You look at the roster. Not so much the talent and the depth that you have on the defensive side of the ball, but Paul, you know how big of a fan I am of Vic Fangio. Mm-hmm. You give him those defensive toys. Okay, that's what you got over there. On the offensive side of the ball, you got you, it seems like your weakness is your running back position and Tua Tagovailoa, and maybe the offensive line. Okay, because you got to keep Tua upright. In the times he was upright, he was a serviceable quarterback for you. But if you brought someone in with more talent, we have to try to look at the 2024 free agent market and try to see what, what comes in there. But here's, here's the question I wanted to pose to you guys. And I want Paul, I want you to go first on this. 
the Buffalo Bills recognized very, very early that the Kansas City Chiefs were the team that they had to equip their team to beat. And they have in a couple preseason, in a couple, not preseason, but a couple of regular season games. They equipped their team to beat the Kansas City Chiefs. And that's who they know they have to go through. Could we be seeing the Dolphins equip their team to take care of Buffalo in the same plight? Are they, are they trying to equip their team? Because you look at the roster moves they made. You look at some of the things that they do. They already have beaten Buffalo in the regular season, albeit you want to talk about the weather. Are they equipping their team with all this patchwork stuff to try to beat the Bills? And if they beat the Bills, does that save McDaniel's job for another year while he gets his quarterback? So Josh Allen goes against his own defense every day of his life. So the move to Fangio, I, I don't think helps Miami against Buffalo, right? Yeah. So is is there is there a narrative there, right? That yeah. you all you're looking at your division, you got to take care of your division first. Absolutely, totally agree with you there, right? They have to look at Buffalo. That's the only team they really should be concerned about beating is Buffalo, right? You yep. but you beat Buffalo, you've climbed the mountain. Everything after that is you know you're you're probably in a place that you don't necessarily belong. Right. So yeah. good, good luck. Right. <laughs> but crazier things have happened. Um, but you transition to his own defense. I don't think you're doing that because you think Josh Allen is uh, is susceptible to zone defenses. Like, I just mm-hmm. I just don't see that as a as a thing. I mean, maybe Mario, Mario, maybe Joe will disagree with me or maybe Ryan will disagree with me. But to me, the Fangio move doesn't move the needle to me at all at all. And I think that's probably the biggest thing that's changed for Miami from, yeah. you know, going into this season. Mario, to your point, that should be Miami's thought process. That should be Miami's thought process. That should be the Patriots thought process. That should be the Jets thought process. Because as you always say, as we know, you take your division first. Once you win your division, then you go after the big fish, right? You take care of your, your division. Then you say, where am I compared to this team? Like, like Paul just said, if for some reason Miami would win the division this year, they'd get to the playoffs and realize, oh, we're standing next to Kansas City and Cincinnati. We don't have a shot. Um, and that's just the way it is. So, you know, I think that leads to some of the confusion because – uh, as as Paul just said, they bring in Nick Fangio, a zone guy, and, and we've seen what Allen can do against the zone. And it's just like, if you're not chasing the Buffalo Bills, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're just, you're just you know, throwing jacks on the ground. You know what I mean? You're just playing pickup sticks. Whatever you're doing, it's just not working. And and they need to get serious, and they're just not serious. And so until until they find a quarterback that's stable and can play a full season, and until they they figure, you know, wasn't there a time just two or three years ago they had multiple offensive coordinators calling plays? Like it's been a mess there as far as coaching staff, ownership, all of that. You know, it's not Washington command skins as Ryan calls them bad, <laughs> but it's it's not good there as far as you know leadership coming from the top. Uh, you know, and, and I'm not saying that I don't like McDaniels, but, you know, it's it's all around him, too. So uh, we'll see what they do. But they're not equipping themselves to beat the Buffalo Bills. They're equipping themselves to to not have a losing season is what they're equipping themselves to do. You know, obviously you want to beat Buffalo, um, but they, they just last season gave me real big vibes of they're the dog that caught the car. And it's kind of like they, they didn't know what to do <laughs> after that, right? Like got off to an eight, no start. And they kind of stopped and looked around and they were like, what is going on? We don't know what to do with this. Like, I don't know what January to do football, at this point. January yeah, I mean, football. What yeah, is this? And, and they, they proceeded to just like their pants for the rest of the season. So I, I just, you know, and you wonder how much of that was the Tua injury, how much of that was, you know, the, the injuries that they saw in the secondary, how much of that was a rookie head coach. Um, how much of that really got better in the off seasons Who is still your quarterback is Jalen Ramsey at 28, uh, that much of an upgrade over Byron Jones. I don't know. I mean, I don't think so. I guess Byron Jones had a down year last year, but let's not pretend that he was, you know, a scrub coming into last season. I mean, they, they, those two, him and Howard were touted as the best tandem corners in the NFL going into last season. And we saw how that worked out and they did a knee jerk reaction to his downfall to say, well, we just have to go out and get a guy who's like, a year older and maybe a little bit better than Byron Jones um, who doesn't have a great track record against Stefan Diggs or any elite wide receiver over the last few seasons. <laughs> and does, does Vic Fangio help that much? I mean, we saw Bradley Chubb play in the playoff game who didn't have much of an impact. I mean, as a whole off season with 
Um, Fangio going to be that much better for Chubb? I mean, you can make the argument that Chubb wasn't a huge impact player in in Denver when he played there. I mean, he was good, but was he a game breaker like he was supposed to be when he when he got drafted? I just don't. Again, I think you you obviously have to topple the the king. The Bills are the king of the East until somebody comes and takes it from them. Um, but I I I if if Miami makes it to the playoffs, I just I don't see how they're built to win in the playoffs. And that's your end game. I mean, we talked, I talked yeah. about it on my show for years and years, Mario, like you want to make the playoffs and it's like, for what? Like, if you don't think you can win the Super Bowl, what do, what are you worried about making the playoffs for? Because, yeah. you know, and, and you I get think an extra Miami's game to have put to fans take, in seats, you know? Like, yeah. I mean, Miami's, if you're the home team, right? Like yeah, I think yeah. Miami's going to have to take a long, hard look as the season wanes on what, what they want to be by the end of the season. And is it as a, in a position to draft high or is it in a position to, make a run at the Super Bowl. And I, it's going it, to, again, we keep going back to it. It's going to depend on Tua. If Tua's playing at an MVP pace, which you can make the argument he was last year until he got his first injury, he was playing at an MVP pace, mm-hmm. you know, great. They're going to be a, probably a good team because McDaniels is a talented offensive head coach. I think they're going to go out and score a ton of points. But the first time that Tua gets thrown to the ground like a rag doll and he doesn't remember his judo training, like... <laughs> You're, you're going to have a lot of people holding their breath because Mike White ain't it. Skylar Thompson ain't it. Um, yeah. And you're in a lot worse shape if you're Miami without Tua Tungo Vailoa than maybe any of the top tier AFC teams are without their quarterback. If you lose Josh Allen, your season is essentially over, but I don't think you're a bottom dwelling team mm-hmm. without Josh Allen. You That yeah. Miami team is a bottom dwelling team without Tua Tungo Vailoa quarterback. And here's why I said that comment from before is the fact that it seems like Brandon Bean dropped the 2020 Buffalo Bills handbook and Mike McDaniel picked it up. And he said, okay, let me see. Uh, I have a quarterback on a rookie contract. I'm going to trade for an elite wide receiver and I'm going to beef up my defense. Sound familiar to any of you guys talking about Buffalo Bills? I mean, that's what they did this offseason. They beefed up their defense. They have a quarterback that's still on the rookie deal and they got Tyreek Hill. Other than that, and you have a patchwork offensive line. You mean from guys that you were you were you were familiar with, you know what I mean? That's what it seems like they're doing. So they're 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 a couple of years behind Buffalo, and unlike Buffalo, as Paul said, they don't have the resources to draft and refill those positions. Mm-hmm. And eventually, you're going to have to pay a quarterback. And if you don't pay Tua, you got to start from scratch and then bring all, all these other guys. What's the other option you have other well, than drafting? I mean, and and that you got to bring him in free agency. Yeah. Right, like the blueprint may have been dropped, but you don't have a unicorn at quarterback like Buffalo you, does. Yeah, you right? really don't. You the, really these don't. blueprints work when you've got these quarterbacks that you can drop into any system, and you know Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, like those are guys that are you know transcendent talents in terms of how they play football um, yeah. for different reasons. Right, Josh Allen is he's going to go out and Josh Allen and he's going to go out and be the best player on the football field at any given moment when he wants to throw the team on his back. Like he did in that Miami game in the snow, right. To go get that tie. You know, it was kind of like he went out on the field and it was like something out of a movie, like the replacements, like, all right, guys, go get on my back. We're just going to go get this win. Right. Um, Patrick Mahomes is the most physically gifted quarterback we've ever seen. Joe Burrow is arguably the the coolest quarterback in terms of pressure that we've ever seen. Yeah. And I, I keep going back to it. Like Tungo is a, is a nice guy by all accounts. Everything I've heard from him, he sounds like he's smart. He's a nice guy, but it, you know, it, if you don't know how to fall and you're already a small quarterback and you've got, you know, four concussions in the last three seasons, like that's a, that's a lot to put your eggs in uh, as opposed to a Josh Allen or a Justin Herbert or any of these other guys. And I don't know if falling is something you can learn in your 20s. Like, either you know how to fall or you don't. Like, it's not something you can learn by, you know, like taking jitsu or something like that. I he got hit in that Cincinnati game. He looked like Booger McFarlane with his hands. I want to yeah. I want to just I mean, call like, back to no, that, And that's a that's a huge problem for the NFL, just in oh, general. Oh, big time. Oh, yeah. The optics 100%. of that were terrible. The optics that, on that That scene awful. on the field, it was just between him in Buffalo or in oh, Miami God. against Buffalo. That – Versus what we saw the following week. If he gets another concussion this season, 
Mm -hmm. the NFL, somebody is going to have to step in and make him retire if he's not Mm going to do it himself because they cannot keep putting this kid on the field if he's going to continue to get tossed to the ground like a rag doll. I want to make a call back to something that Ryan had just mentioned. He mentioned Joe Burrow being one of the coolest, you know, under pressure quarterbacks. Listen, if you played your rookie season with Bobby Hart as your left tackle, you've, yeah. you've seen the teeth of the tiger, my friend. <laughs> That's <laughs> like, there ain't nothing to go scare you after that. Like I'm scared for Tua. Mm-hmm. After that Cincinnati game, yeah. and it, it might have been week four. I, was it the following week, Ryan? Was it the following week that that happened? Yeah, because he, he got because he got the he got the concussion against my, yeah. the, against the Bills that they let yeah. him go back out there and play. It was the following week because the questions were why is he out there? And it was a short right. week. Remember, it was yeah. Thursday night after yeah. they beat Buffalo on Sunday. Yeah, the we question were doing was, the, um... he's gotten two two concussions now in four days, and that yeah. was the narrative going going out of the coming oh, out of that yeah. Cincinnati game. Yeah, because we were doing the Ravens post game. We literally stopped our post game to say, "Listen, this is." I'm worried for the kid's life at this point. Mm-hmm. Like, forget football, forget all this other stuff, forget the competitive, you know, rivals at AFC East. I want this kid to you be able to walk in his fifties, okay, right. on his own. That's ridiculous. Um, I know, I know, we talk about it because we're we're comparing, you know, who do the Buffalo Bills have to play in the AFC East in order to, you know, did any team usurp them? And Ryan was hundred percent on with his points. You, you, great, great kid. You see him at the, you know, the, the podium. He's making jokes with McDaniel. He's doing all this other mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. Nick Saban had nothing but great things to say about the kid. Mm-hmm. And then he, he uh, you know, he has these injuries in the NFL, and you're like, this is, you know, this is Troy Aikman esque. Like you mm-hmm. don't want to, you don't want to go down this path, kid. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's why he's talking about retiring. So. You know, when you have to factor that in, you have to take a deep breath when your quarterback hits the ground every time. And now that's not a problem for Buffalo because we have a freaking, you know, Clydesdale back there that jumps over everybody like he's a maniac. Mm -hmm. You're like, Jesus Christ, Josh, just slide once, please, for the love of God. Um, He's on he's on the Cam Newton path of, you know, NFL quarterbacking Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So um, so I think for Ryan, uh, uh, Joe and Paul. The, the Miami Dolphins, although they did make some strides with their defense this offseason, they have not usurped the Buffalo Bills as far as their roster. Is that what we're in agreement with today? As an organization, right, When since 2000, they've had six seasons where they had 10 wins. In that time, they have zero playoff wins. Oh, They, they, only, they made the playoffs five times since 2000. 2000 was their, was their last playoff win was 2000 like as an organization they're a nightmare right and to only have six seasons including the one which was your last playoff win with 10 wins and in you know the in this cycle in this era of the nfl where you have to run in hot streaks you have to run in two three-year packets and then blow it up and then run it back in two and three-year packets it's just not acceptable right like it's it's bad ownership like we Mm -hmm. talked about it earlier it is it is bad ownership so Every time you think Miami has done something good, just remember that the, it's bad ownership. It, it almost doesn't matter how much they improve their team because from the top down, it, it's just it's not a good situation for anybody to walk into. All right, that's it for us, guys. Sick. Sounds good. Great, great dismount. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really nailed the landing on that one, Mario. All right, huh? I, I guess that's it. <laughs> It's 10 to midnight. Kiss my ass.